All right, we've got another episode of The Unknown Pro. I'm here with the great, the beautiful, Jade Hewitt. Hello. <laughs> That's you, Jade. What's up, man? How's, um, how's this quarantine treating you? We'll obviously get into that later, but just for the, you know, a few bullet points. What's going on? <clears throat> well, um, you know, for techie people, it's not the worst thing. We're kind of used to, like, being on our laptops. Fair. Um, however, living with my mother has <laughs> proved to be interesting. I mean, and my father, but my mother in particular, you know, so that's fun. That's Other cool. than that, just, you know, talking with my good friend, Samu. Wow. But, yeah, that's you. That's an honor. Quarantine or no quarantine, I feel like yeah. that's, that's on the daily yeah, for sure. schedule. Yeah. Um, so I want to just like read a little bio about the Jade Hewitt. Um, and if I forgot anything or said anything wrong, you just jump in. Remind oh, me. Okay. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. So um, you played softball at Millsaps College, graduated in 2012, class of 2012. Yeah. Um, you are from Louisiana, born and raised, right? The greatest state in America. You can just go ahead and say it. It's fine. Pretty swampy, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, you and your dad actually ran a super successful college softball camp in Louisiana from 2008 to 2017. Um, yep. so not just you are invested in softball, but everyone around you, it seems as well, right? Yep. Um, you started with the Dallas Charge as a photographer, media person in 2015, and then from there went to Scrapyard, where you were, have been working there since, and, um, during all that, you, in 2017, started to, started to take photos for the USA Women's National softball team, and as of late, you were the photo media person for the 2020 Olympic team. That's about it. Yep. I That's think about it. Faces, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> That's about I don't it. Mean to, I don't mean to, like, upstage you on your own show, but. No, that's fine. It's very easy, actually, to upstage me in any <laughs> Any way, shape, or form. <laughs> um, so what a uh, decorated bio we've got there, Jade Hewitt. Um, why don't you take me through your softball player experience? What, what were you like as a softball player? What drew you to the sport? What has kept you in the sport? Go. Uh, I modeled my game from a young age after Lisa Fernandez. Obviously. Now, let, let, let's be clear. I'm not saying I was that caliber of a player, <laughs> but um, I loved how she was just like nails, like visor was there to just like absolutely destroy you and all of your hope for winning. Yeah. So I loved Lisa Fernandez. She was a big influence on me. Um, when I was in the fifth grade, we did one of those like uh, class books that you worked on like all year and then you like laminated it, whatever. And I wrote a poem about softball because <clears throat> I'm super cool. And in it, I said that I wanted to own my own professional team. Okay. So, yeah. So that, that was in there. Um, so, but growing up, actually, before Fernandez, I wanted to be, I was, wanted to be Mia Hamm. I was going to go to UNC. I was going to dominate at soccer. Mary uh, Garcia Parra. Yeah, for sure. When I was about 12, I realized I was not destined to run, be a runner, ever. you know? So I kind of threw that dream aside and, <laughs> and kind of switched gears. Uh, but yeah, I played catcher in third, like, for, for forever and played four years in college, which uh, Millsaps is a Division three, so, you know, wasn't on... ESPN or anything like that but anyone that plays all their years of eligibility in a college program hats off because absolutely it's tough it's hard even just getting, um, getting to play in college you know what about yeah yourself? and Millsap is a really really hard academic school mm. and I say that with like not trying to sound like cocky because I was an art major <laughs> so like all my teammates were like biochem and I was like <laughs> I'm making sculptures. So all my friends were really smart, and then there was, like, me. Um, Fair. But, uh, yeah, I, I had, my heroes growing up were Fernandez and then uh, Jessica Mendoza, for sure, Obviously. when she really started, like, being a voice for women and the sport. And 
and getting involved and just being an advocate and all that, she really influenced me as a player, but as I've grown up, how much she's influenced me as a, you know, working in the sport type thing. So. Oh, absolutely. Gosh. Yeah, for Come sure. Up. Talk about the whole package, man. What a goddess. Uh, truly. <laughs> absolutely. I a few times. And, and like every, a lot of the times it's when I'm like doing this interview with her. And so like handing Jessica Mendoza a microphone and telling her how to put it on because you're trying to be professional and nervous is like, it's like handing a glove, like handing a basketball to Jordan and being like, here's how you dribble it. Like it's, it's, I think about it and I just cringe because I'm like, oh, it's so yeah, embarrassing. On the other side, she's so nice that she was probably like, okay, thank you. Oh, she was so nice. Yeah. Every time. Like, yeah, just hey. okay. Yeah, oh, like this, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I just want to go crawl in a hole. I'm so embarrassed. Okay. Anyway, you know, it, could, it could be much worse. It really it, could. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know how it could be, but I know it probably could be. If you need any t tips on playing outfield, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> here's how you put on a microphone, and here's how you hit home runs. Like, that's yeah. perfect. Yep. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Was Millsaps where you wanted to go to college as a kid, or, or did that kind of appear to you as you went? I never the, – the only places I wanted to go as a kid were uh, Tulane. We grew up Tulane fans because my family's all from New Orleans, but I wanted to, like, play soccer there. <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah, I never really had, like, colleges I was looking at. My sister went to Millsaps, and that's how I, like, got familiar with the campus. So she was there for the four years right before I got there. Oh. So I was on campus a lot and got to know the coach. And uh, it's only two and a half hours from here, so it's, like, close but not. Yeah. Um, but, no, I didn't even know what Millsaps was until my sister, like, got her acceptance letter. And I was like, yeah, I'll go there, too. And you – no regrets? You liked it? I, I think I sent my recruiting video to quite a few D1s. Hell yeah. And I think I got all those automatic replies. It's like, we've, we've currently filled our roster for the upcoming season. Thanks. Here's the link to season tickets. Yeah, that was me. So. Do you still have it? And can I get my hands on it? I, th I think I still have. I've, I think I have. I, I know I got one from like Nichols and Northwestern. Um probably ULM. Yeah. Love it. I was not a hot commodity. <laughs> you want to know something that's so funny now that you said ULM? Um, my, so when we were freshmen in college after that year, you were still able to go back and play for your travel ball team, your 18 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do that? Because you were 89. I don't know if you were um, or you too old. Yeah, I think you could do that because I remember I, there was a like 10 years before I started working professionally that I was coaching travel ball. Mm -hmm. And I remember being out there coaching and there was a girl from somewhere in Louisiana who had gone off, had success at UL and then was coming back and playing on travel ball. And everyone was like, so like, if that was when I was coaching, then I would assume you could do that when I was playing. I remember because I remember it being the last year, my, uh, the year after, um, I went back and played with my travel ball team, they changed the rule and you couldn't do that anymore. But oh, yeah. the point of the story is that, um, we went to nationals and I saw Hillary Bach there who had, who was a pitcher at ASU. And I, and I thought she was so good. And I'm, you know, I'm also playing college and, you know, but I'm watching on TV and I'm a super fan. So I went up to her and I said, Oh my God, Hillary, like I'm Sam. I'm so, what a dweeb. I'm Sam, and I just, like, I really... Your voice went up, like, 17 octaves. Yeah, well, I'm trying to pretend I was really young, but I was 18 years old. And so, so I was like, oh, my God, I, like, really loved watching you pitch, and I thought you were so good. And she, oh, my God, thank you. Where do you go to school? And I said, I, I, go, I go to LMU. And she said, Louisiana Monroe? Yep. They nailed it. No. Yep. So you're like the same age as there. <laughs> like, and I'm like, no, no, no. But anyway, that's my story about Louisiana. I would be like you. Oh my god, I still do that. I'm like, hi, Kaylani Riggins. Like, I am your Sam. fan. She's like, Sam, we're friends now. No. <laughs> I do that. Too. Don't worry, I do that all the time. That's why we're destined to be friends forever. Is because we will never stop being dweebs. Yeah, Kat Osterman has on a few occasions been like. Like, she'll just kind of look at me and be like, dude, are you over it? And I'm like, no, you're Kat Osterman. No, I'm not over it. You're so cool. Like, she'll just give me that look of like, dude, you're annoying me. Like, 
Are you not over it? No, I will never be over it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there was one morning, I don't know what it was or why this had happened, but I looked at my phone and I had a text from Kat Osterman and then another text underneath it from Natasha Watley. And I looked at my phone and I kind of looked around, you know, my, yeah. I, I felt like I was dazed. Yeah. I said, this is my life now. Yep. I showed my dad. I said, dad, look at this. He said, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, same. Yep. <clears throat> anyway, so the reason we're here, we got to keep talking shop, but um, what, what was, what was the inspiration to get into photo, like taking pictures, like taking athletic pictures? Did that come out of nowhere or did that come because you said you were an art major and that kind of stuff? When I was the, the first movie I remember making, I was 12 and it was with a bunch of the boys in my neighborhood. We used to all skate together and we hung out together all the time. And we took my dad's VHS camera and we made a film about this boy who lived in a cardboard box and we would put the box on different people's lawns and throw it out the window and people were and it was just a stupid movie <clears throat> I don't it's it's lost to the world now uh but I thought that was like so much fun and then shortly after that I every summer I went on this huge uh trip with my youth group due to Panama City and I took my little Sony mini DV tape camera and I shot the whole week and I put together a video and I sent it to my friends. And then the next year, I remember my friends were like, dude, are you gonna make a video again? And I thought that was like the coolest thing in the world. Like my friends want me to, I thought it was so cool. So I, I started doing that and they're real stupid. They're probably in the depths of YouTube at the moment, but um. I, I don't know. I just loved shooting. I loved pictures. My mom growing up always had the albums and I loved like home picture, home videos and, you know, old pictures and stuff. So, um, and then I started my own business as like a senior in high school doing recruiting videos. So I just kind of always had the camera in my hands and then it just, you, you make a lot of really horrible work for a long time. And then finally there's like a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Or you don't look back on it in 10 years and be like, that's awful. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just love shooting. I love having a camera in my hand all the time. What was the, what was your ideal thing to shoot? Did you have anything in mind? Um, not really. Kind of like early on, you just kind of like shoot when you can or people kind of be like, hey, can you come take our family pictures and like, you do stuff like that for a long time or like CrossFit. It's probably awful, but you're just, it's just like playing ball. Like you're just getting reps. Like that's really, and that's what, when I've talked to young girls, like about shooting and about starting their own business, like, yes, you know, financially you want to be successful, but like early on, like just get reps. Like it's not about making a ton of money like go out and make a ton of stuff that's probably awful but at least you're you know you're get, you're just getting time with the camera so I don't really think when I was younger there was like anything specific it's probably just stupid stuff with my friends <laughs> like climbing roofs and lighting things on fire and stuff that that sounds really cool really responsible yeah sounds yeah. like and I was in broadcast too at like in junior high and high school uh -huh. and that was really influential because I remember my teachers like they let me literally do anything we wanted. Like we did a jackass segment in high school with me and my best friend, John. And they let us like light things on fire and just like be complete morons. And they encouraged it. And we aired it on Fridays for the school to see. And I had a lot of people who let me do like awesome stuff that have That's been amazing. high. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I don't know how they let us do it. We did a skit once with the librarian who's like 65. And we were chasing her down a hallway and she tripped and, and busted her chin. They had a nurse, there was blood everywhere. It was awesome. Oh my She's god. Cool. So made, She's fine. I was gonna say so it made for a great shot. That was the take that we used was when she hit the deck. Oh my god. Anyway, yeah, uh, I, yeah. When when did it turn into softball? My senior year when um uh I started shooting recruiting videos. And it really uh, I charged like 75 bucks <laughs> and uh, started doing those and then kind of word got out in Louisiana. And then 
I did that all the way through college, which was like, you know, if we were in the off season or something, we'd have, you know, you have the weekend and I would wake up Saturdays, Sundays, go out all around the South, shoot, you know, make, trying to just make money. And uh, so that kind of got me deeper in the softball was just recruiting videos. That's so cool. And you, I mean, you were already a player. You were someone who knew you were going to college to yeah. play softball. So was it? And I was in college for it. So t- like sitting down at the shoots, talking to the girls, because I'd been through the recruiting process. Yeah. So their parents can tell them until they're blue in the face, you're going to go to the number one school in the country. But, and they have no clue where I could sit down and talk with them and answer questions and stuff like that. So, so you were, gosh, I already knew you were the whole package, but now <laughs> Doing it even more that was the full that was the real deal yeah that was I, I, I probably did between two and three hundred did a lot wow yeah it was a lot that's like so- on, on my website it has all of the girls that had committed and I remember at one point I did a percentage and it was like 97 percent of the girls that did a recruiting video played anywhere from a lot of JUCOs D3s all the way up to Alabama so, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. I haven't done it in a while, but it's crazy. I should have put that on your bio. Sorry, I forgot. Also a pro recruiter for the softball world. <laughs> oh, God. I'll get that name tag printed straight away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about um, kind of what you do for the sport now. You were involved with a couple pro teams before getting uh, 100% with USA. Um, what has that experience been like for you being – involved with the photo video and media for pro softball there have been uh two two two, three people in in my journey in my career that without those people having faith in me and and believing in me like it never would have happened so with the dallas charge the gm at the time was kevin shelton um and he, 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 and before we had met, I had, I had called him up and I had been like, I had like begged him like, Hey, I really want to come work for the summer. Cause I was in grad school. So I had the summer and he was like, he had so much going on and he was like, no. And I was like crushed. <laughs> and then they were hiring interns. I was like, Oh, well, I'll just go be an intern. And, uh, <clears throat> he, he, he had complete faith in me and he's a photo guy himself. So he understood a lot. And, um, when someone literally would, I came with a three page sheet of ideas and I handed it to them and they were like, sure, have fun. So when someone tells you that, like, that's like the best feeling, like you, you don't have any restrictions. You can just like be creative. So <clears throat> that was huge. And then after the charge, uh, Connie May with the scrapyard dogs literally was like, here's the keys to the kingdom. Like we, we, want you to be a part of it was when monica had had her million year uh, million dollar contract million year contract. Know, yeah um, that's <laughs> intense um so yes so so connie and kevin really uh gave me the tools to be like successful and especially connie with while i was at scrapyard she let me go do all these things with USA and NFCA who I love working with and all that kind of stuff. Um, it just gave me like a ton of flexibility to, to be successful in, in all kinds of areas. So, so that, that whole journey has been crazy. And then like, and a whole separate category is just the players. Yeah. I could talk, I, I could talk for a week about the play, getting to meet the players and, being starstruck and getting to like chill at dinner with them and traveling. And it's been like crazy. And to be honest, like at some times I worry that like, I worry about that window closing. You know what I mean? Like you kind of, you get you get nervous where you're like, I don't want, I don't want to be the old woman who's a photographer around. Like I want to be like the person that's like, cool. <laughs> Or, or like, or who know? Who knows? Softball could disappear at any moment. Like yeah. pro softball, any of that. Like we saw what happened with, with everything this past like couple of months. Like anything could disappear. And so sometimes I'm like, worry. You know, you just you don't want it to end because it's it's yeah. been just the craziest ride ever with yeah. the chart. As in starting as an intern, right? You know, and 
to, you know, here we are now type of thing. So I don't know if that answered your question. I think I kind of went off a little bit, but. To be honest, I don't even really remember what my question was. Okay, then that sounds like a plan. You want to talk about putting out bad content. I'm a terrible journalist, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Just Um, Okay, wait. So when I was an intern, uh, our first series was against the Rebellion. And then our second series was against the Pride. Okay. So this was Cap last year. Duran, uh, 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 Tosh, everybody was on the Pride. So all the interns are like so hyped for the Pride to come in town. Yeah. I was so nervous shooting that game that the first pictures I took were of the lineups being introduced. And Andrea Duran, they announced her. And I love her growing up. Yeah. And I was like, just taking pictures out of nervousness. And I still have those pictures. And they're so bad. <laughs> they're like blurry. Oh, they're like, oh, bad content. I, I literally saved them to like, just to, to laugh at. Because they're so terrible. And sometimes you're like, was I paying attention? Like, what was <laughs> I doing? What was what's wrong with me? Jeez. Yeah. So I've got some really horrible pictures of Duran on my uh, Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> Hey, you know what? We don't, so know how far, we don't know how far we've gone until we look at where we've been. Right. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. I, I don't think I wrote it, but I just, you know, I say it when it's time to say it. It sounded good coming Thank out you. of Yeah, I, I, it, was, it was nice. I really appreciate that. Um, so what about, um, you know, meeting the athletes, being a softball player yourself, and now kind of being on the other side of the sport in that you're showing this sport that you loved, still love, uh, that you played. Um, what is, what do you feel like as far as what you do, your real, like your responsibility to yourself as a softball player? How do do you feel like that helps you capture stuff? Yeah, I feel like, and this is what, uh, is what I feel like and also what other people have said to me is just my passion for this is just like probably super annoying at times. Never. It's like through the roof because I've grown up playing the game and you know, not many other people might fully appreciate what Ali Carta is doing on and off the field. Or they might not see that, but I see it and yeah blows my mind and I'm like I, I want to capture that I want people to know how amazing you are and that's what I tell the athletes especially like at the beginning of the season when we have our media meeting is like you guys hang the moon for me like you guys are the most incredible people and it's my job to show that it's my job to and especially because like we're not football, we're not baseball we're not basketball we're not yeah. you know the U.S. women have soccer I have a huge following and so I'm like I want to do everything I can for 11 year olds for for your moms for grandparents to know who you guys are and to make you look amazing and it's just crazy because like when you think about what your contribution to softball is like as a player you're like you know it was me I'm like I'm what am I doing for the sport you know, I'm not doing a whole lot. And then I coach for a long time and I'm like, what am I doing for this board? You know, so to be able to find that, that little sliver of thing that is your passion and to be able to do that for the sport, like I'm so grateful. And that's what I want. That's what I work hard every day to do is to, to kind of use this random skill set and make an impact so, you know, when people, most, most people are not going to know that I took that photo of Aubrey Monroe that's on a billboard. People don't care. They like Aubrey. They don't care about the person who took it. Yeah. But if a little girl's driving down the road and sees that billboard and goes, mom, 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 I want to be like her, then I've done my job. And that is amazing to me. Especially like after game autograph sessions, when you see that, or yeah. when girls print out a picture that you've taken to get it signed, like coolest feeling that there ever is. Ever. What do you feel like when you drive by and you see the billboard of Aubrey Monroe? I get my binoculars out and I'm like, where's the picture credit? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm have- kidding a little bit, but Please. not really. Yeah. I'm not really kidding at all. No. Um, yeah, I get fired up. It, it, whoever the player is, because I've right. seen that. Player. I've seen 
you know, I've seen the training that they've gone through. I've seen the things they have on going behind the scenes. I've seen them play on the field, their failures and their successes. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like, I don't care if it's me who took the photo or anyone else. Like I get, I get so fired up for these athletes. When they text, if they text me, hey, I, I signed so-and-so. Like, I am lit. I get so pumped. Valerie Arioto today sent me her logo for her, like, you know, Valerie Arioto. And I was like, this is so dope. Like, <laughs> I just, <laughs> so I texted her back in all caps. I was like, this is dope. <laughs> so I just get fired up because I'm like, that's awesome that you're doing that thing. That's, like, good for you. It's good for the softball community. It's good for these kids. Like, that's, that's just, like, it's so awesome. You can't beat that. So you really feel like, this is going to sound funny, but I really mean this, is that you feel like you're helping these athletes make their dreams come true by putting them out there, by taking these shots and letting people see them for what they are and what they do and, you know, the ups yeah. and downs. I don't, I don't want to give myself that. I don't, I don't think I deserve, do. I don't think I deserve that kind of credit, but I think, I, I just think, it's just a crazy spot to be in. There's been so much of my journey that's just been like being at the right place at the right time, being a female. Yeah. Play, like even something as small as like having your own camera. So the company that you're working for, that's it's softball. No one's swimming in cash. Like right. doesn't have to go out and buy you stuff. Like there's just been a lot of things that have just, it's just been luck. And if I can do anything to help a player in any way, big or small, that's what I'm here for, you know? How do you feel when you get a notification on Instagram with a tag because someone posted your picture? <laughs> yeah, that's fun. <laughs> I like doing that. But I'm, I'm kind of picky because, like, some people, some people, like, I, I don't want to be in the, like, I don't want to be in the thing. Don't be like, thanks to J2 Media for this great photo. Like, just tag me. I don't, don't, I don't want to be in the thing of it. You know what I mean? Just okay. give me a tag. But there have been a few times, and I guess I'll go public with this, but, like, if someone posts something that I love that picture and they didn't tag me, I'll just, like, comment with a heart. I've probably done it to you before. <laughs> probably. You know what, though? Now, since we're, calling, since we're calling things out now on oh recording, do you also give people crap if they do tag you in a photo you've taken, but you're not in the photo? That may not. Is may that or may not is that just a thing that happens for me? So, okay, let's just call like it is. Sam Fisher tagged me in a photo from this year, and I thought she was tagging me because it was a picture of us, and I was in it, and I was really excited, but it was her and Amanda Chittister, and I wasn't even in the photo, and yes, I was upset about it, but it's fine. I've moved on. I'm going to post a picture of me and Chitty. <laughs> and tag me in it? Yeah, and tag you in it. I'm going to go find one, and it's going to be awesome. And you know what? I will double tap that photo. Okay. <laughs> I really will. Um, man, I feel I could just, you know, it's funny is I have all these ideas about what I want to talk to you about, but then in reality, I could just sit here and just talk crap for an hour. Fine. That's fine. <laughs> about Amanda Chester. <laughs> about Amanda Chester. Can you believe that guy? Maybe the most likable person on earth. I know her smile lights up her room. God, it's so annoying. Unbelievable ridiculous <laughs> um so so what what have you thought obviously this year you're on tour and then the you know the world got canceled um 2020 is postponed to 2021 for the olympics um so i'm i don't know if this thought has crossed your head but have have you had thoughts of what you're going to be doing post olympics because what in what you've been doing was the olympic team and the usa team was that like your high high goal like hundred percent like we would be on tour and you meet other photographers and they're like oh like what's your dream and I'm like right now as I'm standing in front of you You're like at it. that was that was like the tour was the greatest two and a half months of my existence it that's what I wanted to do I'd had and there were a lot of people that made that happen to get me there um you know, because when you look at things, sometimes it's hard to justify a photographer. Like, you have trainers, you have coaches, you have staff, you have director, you got all these people, and then it's like the girl that takes pictures. So it's not always easy. You know, there's a lot of people that, like, went to bat for me, and USA Softball was incredible to, to 
you know, have me on tour. So, so that was it. And, and I hadn't thought the only thing I knew after the Olympics was I was going to go live with my sister for like two weeks and spend time with my niece. That's it. That's, and go to the mountains. But I didn't have, I don't have any like, you know, career plans, you know, that was it. And I think part of that was because I was like, so focused on being in the moment and not worrying about after you know whatever was going to happen after was going to happen but I wanted to soak up every single second of being on tour so um I don't know hopefully there's a victory tour in 2021 our whole you know with you know the tour and all that is you know we don't know what's going to happen right you know I I hope and pray that I get to be a part of that again but you know who knows? So, um, I don't know though. I, I really have, I don't know who knows where pro softball is going to be. And I don't, I don't know. Who knows? You got my heart pounding a little bit now. All right. You know, I'm a terrible journalist, but I ask the, the deep questions. Yeah, no, it is a deep question. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I guess now it's just kind of like everything is on pause to just kind of get back until, if there's tour again or the Olympics and then, right. you know, every, literally everyone's dream all the way from your, your players to coaches down to the trainer and photographer, everyone's dreams just got the pause button pressed on them. Right. You got a little uh, taste of it. And then all of a sudden it's like, no. And it was, it was, it, I did not exactly deal with it super well. There was a lot of tears and like, just Not-huh. being honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was, uh, it, it was, that was tough to be living your dream and, you know, then not to wake up. <laughs> yeah. But me. then I would be like, why? I was like, I'm crying, but like, I'm sitting next to this player. She's not crying. Like, she's cool. <laughs> she's <doing it>. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's just kind of these things where like, we were on, the bus. We we're on the bus going to the airport and one of the players is behind me and can like see me sniffling and doing that and he's like taps me on the shoulder and he's like jade are you okay and i was like no <laughs> it was a player i was like oh my god this is so embarrassing, this like, so god, embarrassing. how are you keeping your composure so well that's what i want to right I, I was just like dude yeah so um but you know if the you know the players play in 2021 and win a gold medal you know whether i'm there or whether i'm not that's what, you know, that's what they've been training for. That's what they've been working for. So yeah. who knows? Maybe I'll just come live with you. Is that, I you was waiting know? for you to say after you visited with your sister yeah. for two weeks that you were going to yeah. come here. So, because hopefully I'll have my own house by then and you can just have your own you room. Don't, that's fine. You can never, and then you'll never leave. That's fine. No, 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 no. no. I like, I'd bring my stuff permanently. Yeah. And then you can just capture the everyday life of a city fisher. <laughs> Yeah, it would be this whole YouTube thing. Yeah, you're like, you're taking another nap? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're opening another thing of Oreos? <laughs> this one's mega stuff? Gee, Sam. <laughs> Hashtag Oh, my life. goodness. Um, so, on a final note, I just this is probably the most important note. And I think if whoever is watching and has made it to this point, is this is what they are waiting for. You got me nervous now. Good. Um, you have had so much success with your pictures. And I say this because I obviously see your work. I have your work. Um, but you have these amazing photos. You've been in, you know, like Sports Illustrated. You've been on billboards, ESPN, if you will, you know, some big outlets for sports. Yet Jay Hewitt is probably the most known for a video called Between Two Bonus. You had to go there, didn't you? <laughs> Are you wearing khakis right now? Don't worry about what I'm wearing. <laughs> that means Don't yeah. Worry about it. <laughs> um, you know, Is that like maybe, the highest point. You could be right. I'm just yeah. Kidding. There's been more than a handful of times when I've been out like at a salt, not like in public, like I'm not Beyonce, I'm not like at a grocery store. I was just trying to shop for groceries. Right, I can't, I'm living in a fishbowl. Um, no, like I've been at softball things and people will stop me and be like, and they don't know my name, but they'll be like, oh, you're the bonnet girl. And I'm like, 
yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> um, is, is it possible for a photographer, media, videographer to get a sponsorship by a company? Because you make people talk about Bonet a lot. You know, it's interesting. It's real interesting. Uh, uh, people are very, they, always, they think it's funny. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll shoot a video that's like, so cool. And you got music and it's like, you spent yeah. like a week on it. And you're like, yeah, this thing. But then people are like, oh, are you the girl that put a whole Snickers in your mouth? <laughs> and I'm like, that's me. Yeah, the only. Oh so, yeah, between two bonnets, um, what it's it's fun. I mean, we've only done three. Um, you obviously were the third, uh, you know, victim in that. Um, but it's really fun and it's really stupid. The best. And it has no point to it, like at all. We don't have like an actual sponsor or like, <laughs> you know, anything like that. It's literally just to be really stupid. Uh, but you it's know, fun. Funny is you really challenged me because I, you know, like I like to think of myself as maybe a funnier person on the scale of you know not funny yeah, to funny. So funny. I would say I'm above average in humor, but <laughs> you like people when they talk to me about this video, like oh my god, the girl that was with you, she was so funny. That's my that was my grandma. It. I was grandma. What a goat. Yeah. No, but it's funny because it all depends on who you're interviewing. So like you're super quick witted and like chatty. So it's a completely different experience than when we did the one with Kat. You know yeah. what I mean? Right, totally. So it just and Bridget's like her own comedian, so like that was different. So it just varies. And it's funny because as I get to know players more and more, like if if I sat down right now with you know, girls from USA or girls from Scrapyard, like, I already have things planned. Oh. For just, like, just people are, some people are really easy targets. Absolutely. I'm like, yeah, so, I don't know, maybe we'll, I want to I want to be there for it. Yeah, maybe you need to come, you and Chow should come, oh. should make an appearance. I would love that. Yeah, that, that was probably one of the funniest bits. But see, I don't think I came up with that. I don't think that was me. I don't remember at this point, to be honest, that you called me Sam Shaw Jr. Didn't you say that just came out? Yeah. Yeah. Was, but we had already done the quitting. intro. The intro was with Sam Shaw. Maybe it was my, my, one of my interns was Raquel. She was there. Maybe it was her. I don't know. It could have been. She did roll but, up with ideas. Yeah. So I'm not sure, but uh, it's just fun to roast people. You, people ask me, too. They're like, why was she so mean to you? I was like, you know what? <laughs> she she but wasn't. Funny, like, I can make fun of you for playing at LMU because I played at a D3. Like, <laughs> and because I know? make fun of myself. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. I, hopefully hopefully we can do Bonet again. Um, but I would, I think in the grand scheme of life, it's not quite what I want to be remembered yeah. for. But a nice side note. These things. It's fun. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, I think there might be, I think they're teaser. I think there might be a little something, something with Bonet with you coming out again at some point. I am. Maybe like a director's cut. I'm pleading the fifth. Unseen footage. Is that what you say when you're pretending you don't know anything? Yeah, I don't know who I'm also whispering to, but. Yeah, and like whispering so that you can still see your whole mouth. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, well, to wrap it up, my dear sweet friend, I. You know, I don't have any more questions, but this is me wow. just telling you that what can you do. You can I ask you a question? Yes. So, in like in the same vein that we have our, you know, our gifts and our talents and stuff. Like when I think of you, I I think of your on field stuff as only like a, like a, a small part of of what I think you bring to the game and to the sport. You know what I mean? And I don't think everybody's like that. I think, like, you know, what you bring on the field is, like, you're really freaking good at softball, but, like, what you offer the community off the field, I think that's just – I think that's just in the same ballpark as, as a lot of us. You know what I mean? You just offer – you found what suits your person – what is – what is you 
what's great about you and you have found a way to share that with other people and to like make other people laugh and I think that's like I don't think everybody can say that I think that's really special God, I was about to compliment you and then you complimented me I'm just saying it's true to be it's fair true. though you you said can I ask a question and you didn't um ask okay. a question but your answer would be I'm gonna say it so. well I mean, you can comment. I guess I started as a question, but no, it's like, okay. That was so nice, but now I feel like it. Now, way, like, do you ever think like that? I know you're not quite like a super self-absorbed. Like, let me lay in bed and analyze how awesome I am. But I feel like it's true. Well, you know, it's funny because um, there's days where it's hard because I don't like in the in in the software world. I don't have a, like a ton of followers, or I don't have a ton of likes or all this. And and I sometimes I find myself thinking, should I be posting? more like the people that have a ton of followers and have a ton of likes should I be trying to to be more like them um or post more like them and give that same kind of content and whenever I start to feel those kind of things I think of the conversation you know these kind of conversations and I think about how much you know I'm I'm only one way like this is all I've got and so I feel like I should offer it you know whatever that may be whether it's making fun of myself or making fun of your khakis you know so but no, I really appreciate that. A lot, of people, a lot of people can hit home runs. A lot of people can be great on defense. But like what what sets you apart, you know, I just, I think, I think you're really special. And that's what so I like. Nice. And you're really pretty. So there's Oh that. my God. Don't be crazy. I'm not saying you're prettier than me. I'm just saying. Well, I, I, that's not possible. Okay, great. I just wanted to be straight. But I do that. probably look smarter than you right now with my my blue light glasses. I would, I would agree with that. I think you're not prettier, sure. but maybe like a high intellectual. Yeah. Like not an art major. Yeah, definitely not an art major. Like I probably just solved, you know, COVID-19 because of how smart I look. It's impressive. Congratulations. Thank you. Sometimes my neck gets sore because my brain's so big. But what I was going to say to you is that what you do is so important and so big because there's some things that I'm sure that you look at, like I know I look at, if I see like a poor advertisement or just poor marketing, it doesn't make me interested in the product. And realistically, what you're doing is you're giving content about a product and the product is softball, it's professional softball, it's international softball, whatever it is, you're putting this stuff out there for people to market themselves, for us to market the sport. And our ultimate goal is growing the game, right? And what you bring to the table you're not a player anymore. You know, you're not a coach. You're not a trainer. You're not that, but you're just as important. And honestly, in some realms, more important because you're allowing us to put ourselves out there for the whole world to see and for everybody to get on board with softball, you know? So whenever you start to feel like snot crying, because you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> myself, you know, it's, it's nice. I feel like so every Wednesday night. Yeah, so most of the time, yeah, 4 p.m. On a, on a Wednesday, when that starts to roll around, just honestly, like, I know I probably speak for everybody who you've taken a picture of in that you are priceless, you're irreplaceable, and, you know, we have content, and we can promote ourselves because of you, so, you know, and you'll always be tagged by me, at least, I'm just saying. Now I sound like a horrible person, you know. <laughs> I just remember getting, a, like, an all-caps message in a group me saying, don't crop the watermark. Yeah, that's my, fam that, that, that's my famous phrase. You know? That's probably going to be on my gravestone. Your uh, sugar, spice, and everything nice, so, you know, you, you got to have a mixture of the all-caps every once in a know? while. You got to use it every now and then. Can I people it. cropping that out? We need it, you know? Yeah, we need it, and we need you, Jade Hewitt, so... Thanks, Thanks for Sam. talking to me. Thanks for talking to me. I'll probably <laughs> still text you after this stops recording. I feel like we did okay. I feel like this I was good. We, I think we did great. Now, the only thing is we have to say bye, and I don't know how to do that. So you think I should just end Here's it? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, on three, say the one thing that bonds our friendship that we didn't talk. You ready? Okay, and one. then I'll end it? If you want to. No, okay, go. So when, when I when I count to three, you're gonna say the one thing we didn't talk about as best as best friends. Okay. One, two, three. Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>